this got picked up by the local Fox affiliate in Minnesota. And this is this is wild right here. Let's uh, give you a little backgrounder so we know what we're talking about. A local podcaster is now facing charges for something he allegedly did while live streaming his show. Aaron Imholt is the host of the Steel Toe Morning Show that has been on the air for at least a decade. Fox Science Karen Scullin joins us now to explain what is happening here. Karen? 37-year-old Aaron Imholt made his first court appearance this morning for disseminating private sexual images without consent. But he appeared to do this while actually live streaming. Even the news is like, this guy's a fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah. Am I reading this right? <laughs> live streaming. Okay. Can you believe oh, this? All right. She broke... was live streaming as she said it and in shock. Yeah. <laughs> he broke the law on his show? Uh, okay. If you say so. <laughs> the teleprompter's broken, I guess. <laughs> I thought I wasn't coming. Welcome to the show. It's me. It's me. It's 37-year-old Aaron Imholt, the host of the Steel Toe Morning Show, a YouTube podcast with about 13,000 subscribers. But one of Imholt's May shows has him in some legal trouble. He was reported for sending a photo of a naked woman that he knows to a person joining him on the podcast. So they're showing Gino Biscotti, and they're showing the time when Aaron sent Gino the naked picture of... Kayla Ricada, and listen, this world has gotten so weird. I'm watching Tukey Soup last night, yeah. and Gino calls in to yell about this and how much he hates April and Aaron and everyone involved in all of this. Like in wild. That woman reported the situation to police, and now <laughs> look at that goober. <laughs> You, uh, a spoiler coming up. Aaron's going to talk about how hot he looks in his mugshot <laughs> that we're looking at right now. Another win for the toe. <laughs> Another W. <laughs> it's a, it takes a certain kind of person to smile in a mugshot. It and it's really always does. a particularly kind of crazy. And yeah, he or, or it. creepy. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Criminal charges. Did you check? I, your... I like tattoos more than I think. Your boy didn't do too bad, did he? <laughs> and those words are now part of a criminal complaint against Imholt. Dipshit. The court documents describe a relationship breakdown between Imholt and three others. He started disparaging them publicly on his show back in April before sending the nude photo in May. Today, other podcasters are using it as material for their shows. Who the fuck said in Miserable's company... This should be an LL. Well, this should be Patrick Mountain. It's fucked up. They're showing Kevin Brennan and Stevie Lou with that segue. That's a bullshit right there. Gino snitched on Aaron. Gino 100% snitched on Aaron. Imholt is a sort of shock jock type, often saying things that some would consider racist, homophobic, sort of, misogynistic, sort of. and more. Some have said to Fox 9 that he used to walk up to the line, but now he crosses it. Ugh. Local reporting. <laughs> Some have said to us, he used to walk up to the line, and now he crosses it. Oh, yeah. But they did call him a sort of shock jock, which felt right. Yeah, that, that actually is correct. Who told you he used to walk up to the line, and now he crosses it? Some. Some, huh? Yeah. Hey, I got a couple names. You want to give me an example? I've got some. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> off with that shit. That's such bullshit reporting right there. If you got an opinion, just say it, lady. <laughs> It wasn't the hell. Imholt told police he did not recall ever receiving or sending a nude photograph of the victim. He bailed out of jail this morning with a no contact order in addition to no disparaging comments on social media, online, or on a podcast. In the newsroom, Karen Scullin, Fox 9. So that's just incredible right there. This is getting picked up by the news. In fact, someone just sent this to me, sent this to me today. That this is even being covered in uh, The Sun. Mm. <laughs> Sick show. YouTuber Aaron Imholt arrested over explicit photo sent on live stream and viewers blasted. He crossed the line. <laughs> it's viewers blasted. That's not what people are mad at Aaron about. They they hate the goal. <laughs> it's, it's, <what> they, <laughs> it's the e-backing that's the problem. It's not the racist <laughs> remarks. But. And you know what's amazing, Carl? I remember when you first introduced us to Aaron, when he was first on the show, mm -hmm. he explained to you his business model. Yeah. And you took a pause and you said, well, that's not going to work at all. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me of that. He because... argued with you. I'm loyal to all these staffers that I can't afford from a gig I used to have. And you're like, okay, good luck with that. And look at where we are now. Yeah. 
They, most of them have left. He's down to just the two co-hosts that he has. But yeah, when I had the show with him and he explained that he needs to raise this amount of money because he's got all these different co-hosts and back then it was a lot more people and of course his family and everything. It's like, no, no, that's not how you do it. Try to make yourself a living first and if you can grow it and bring people in, then <laughs> that's the way it goes. So I'm so grateful to you, Carl, for uh, giving me a place to talk about this stuff because it's on my mind so much and I have no one left to share it with. It finally hit me what's unique about a lot of these people and the difference between Aaron and John and Chad is that, and even Eric, the actor, is that they all had fame. Mm -hmm. They either started without it and got it. Or they had it and then they lost it. And something unique happened to Aaron. Something unique happened to Chad when they had their dream gig and then it was gone. Yeah. And they never recovered. And it amplifies all of their broken neuroses. It really just puts a spotlight on it in a, in a very special way. When you and it separates your... them from like Jake Hudson and other people yes. that we love, but there's just not that uh, Or even Patrick urgency. Michael. Yeah. Exactly. When you went through your list, did you say Kevin Brennan? I did it, but there you go. <laughs> it's another great <laughs> example of Perfect that. Perfect example. Where do you think that fucking bitterness comes from? Yes. Holy cow. And there's a there's another thing that's working in the background is that they had the fame and now they don't, but they all have this glimmer of hope that it's going to come back. Yes. When Stuttering John was doing the DC thing mm -hmm. and calling it 2.0, yep. I'm like, oh, this is 2.0? Mm. <laughs> yeah. You're on version eight. What are you talking about? Yeah. No, but, Chris is right. You saw it when he was in the taxi cab on the way mm -hmm. over back to the bar after he had interviewed that congressman. He was so excited. He was like, we got one. We actually got one, guys. I can't believe it. Like, he was back. This was yeah, happening. Because in his mind, he's going to bring that in the next morning and Howard and yes. Jack. Oh yes. God, yeah. And Fred right. still there Raise in his mind. Him. Yeah. Right. This is great, John. Even though you sucked, it's funny for our show. So thank you for doing this. And but, if, if he's on brand, he'll John will start covering Aaron Imholt because it made news. And yeah, so he wow. has to jump onto that. So he'll probably start covering it a little more. I have a clip coming up where John explains he's bored with Aaron or doesn't care. Because Aaron doesn't talk about him. So he doesn't uh, care. Yeah. He only likes things that to talk sense. about him. I yeah. forgot mm -hmm. that rule. <laughs> it's just yeah. very odd. So this is what happened. Aaron found out Thursday night there was a, a bench warrant for his arrest. He was at his family cottage. So he talked to his attorney and they agreed he would turn himself in Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning. This is uh, yesterday. He gets up at 5.30 a.m., starts getting ready. The police show up at his house and he's like, oh, man, I was going to I was gonna drive in and turn myself in. They're like, yeah, that's not how it's going to work, buddy. <laughs> You're coming with us. So the police <laughs> brought him. And I guess they were polite about it. They didn't cuff him like in his driveway or anything like that. So the neighbors didn't see what was going on. But he was, <laughs> he was brought in to jail. He had to go to court. And he came on his show this morning and discussed that. And thank you to Stalin19 for putting together a little package for us. I have some clips that I want to show to you. This is Aaron explaining going to jail. As they... As they search you and everything else, you know, we were talking and we're just bullshitting and just there. I mean, they're telling jokes and I'm joking back with that. It was, I mean, it, it, this is going to sound weird to say it, the first few minutes of it were fun. <laughs> I, I was having a good time. I couldn't believe how professional Officer Toma was in the arrest and all of that. Sounds like another win for the toe. <laughs> I'm a thumb in the butt guy. <laughs> you got that job. <laughs> I, this is insane to me. This guy comes on. After spending hours and hours in jail and his arraignment and and all of these charges are up against him and he's still got to face that and he's coming out and he's going I had a fucking blast yesterday. Guys. Well, he was all pumped about his suit in the <laughs> arraignment or whatever. I mean, yeah. what do you think he's gonna do? He's insane. Yeah, it's another W. At uh, I get to intake and the first thing the woman says at intake, she goes, "Wow, you're gonna be the best dressed guy here." And I'm like, "Yes." Oh. And uh, she opens up my wallet. They got to take out all the cards. She goes, but she sees a Caesar's Palace, an MGM Grand, a Mystic oh, Lake, and two Hinkley uh, <laughs> game cards. The uh, the Players Club cards. 
She goes, wow, this guy really <laughs> likes Vegas and gambling. <laughs> I'm like, and I told her, I go, yeah, if you guys would all cut it out, I could afford to go back. Uh, so they, they do all that. So this is Aaron bragging twice. The first brag was like how well dressed he was that they were taking notice. Like, look at the threads on this guy. Wow. Of course they were. But then he's also the super cool macho gambling guy who likes to play cards and he's joking along with them and he's making jokes and he's getting everyone laughing. It's like, just so you know, I host a show. I'm, this is what I do. Okay. It's in case you're wondering why I'm so hysterical in the jail. I've never seen anything like this. I couldn't believe the bullshit. I really couldn't. And then I remembered something you said on a previous show when he had to, he was so excited to not do his show yes. and not worry about the goal and go to court. I'm actually at the point where I believe he was having a great day because he didn't have to do his show or worry about the fucking right. goal. Yeah. Because there's just no way while they were frisking him, somebody leaned into his ear and said, I'm a toe boy. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So this is, he, he goes on about what an amazing experience this was for him at the jail. Yeah, you know, it, so far they're being like, it's it's like a hotel stay where you can't leave so far. I mean, so they brought me some blankets and, you know, some other stuff. And it really was like, it, it was a hotel stay where there was a certain checkout time and you're not allowed to leave before that checkout time. This fucking guy, what kind of hotels is he staying at? <laughs> I mean, I, I can't imagine going on a Yelp review for Hilton and being like, this was even better than jail. Well, I would hope so. If you like the Hotel California, then you'll love. Yeah, that's right. You can never leave. What a weird thing to say. Like, is he trying to convince himself or me? Because I'm not buying it. He's incapable Aaron, of would... taking a loss. Is that no, what it is? he was committed. He was accused of a crime. Whether you <laughs> yes. did it or not, no one wants to see you gloating about what a wonderful day you had. Right. Yeah, I know. There's, there's just no humility, no understanding of what's going on. He's acting like this. Everything, and I can only imagine. You see how stressed out he gets when he's not hitting his goal. I can only imagine. Yeah, what he's really thinking, what's really going on in his head with all these things that are happening to him. But he's got to pretend. That he's taking this all in stride and it's great and everyone's having fun. And he says something that <laughs> I hope Kevin Brennan's not watching. And the name of the book was Our Game. H-O-U-R Game. Our Game. It was good. I read like 100, 105 pages. A pretty good book. I get a little sleepy. I took two naps while I was in there. Oh, two naps? <laughs> wow. Two? <laughs> you got it. Couldn't get it fast enough. Two. <laughs> Are you listening to this, KB? This guy's taking naps in jail. <laughs> in jail. <laughs> <laughs> I called my mom wife. She said, go ahead and lay down again. I did. It's great. So, yeah, like I, I just took my blankets, took the little matches they have, put it up on the bench there, laid down, out like a light. Took, two, took a nap before court. Uh, then did court, didn't have to say a word. I was just sitting there, mannequin, a statue. Todd and I talked beforehand, pretty informal. You know, that whole process is not like, I'm going to prove my, you know, this is bullshit and all that. You don't do that there. It's just, you stand there, they tell you, you know, you can't talk about this, that. Yeah, it's, it's an arraignment. We all know that. Does he think that everyone thinks TV is real? He's like, just so you guys know, this isn't like law and order. Yeah, no, I, I do know that. It's an arraignment. You stand there and they read you what you're arrested for, and then you decide what you want to do about it. Okay. He seems like a serial killer. Yeah. Like, you don't, you don't spend the day in jail because people you know have accused you of horrible crimes, whether you're innocent or not. You don't come out smiling and laughing and showing everybody that this was like a celebrity appearance you made and mm -hmm. just so happened everyone that works at the jail loves steel toe and is on your side and offering you money in the good room and it's crazy stuff that he thinks this is the way to come off. Yes. This is a, a well-rounded, adjusted person and this is what I'm giving off. It's frightening. It really is. And again, I told Patrick Melton when he was at my house after DabbleCon, I think I apologized to him for not realizing what a psycho this guy is. I didn't see it. I didn't realize 
this guy's personality. And Patrick Melton picked up on it right away mm. and has been presenting this to the world for the last 18 months. Boy, was he right about this guy. What a psycho. See you later. Get the fuck out of here. And then you get the fuck out of there. So I'm reading the book. I'm taking a nap. Go to court. Read the book. Take a nap. And then I'm out. Uh, well, they booked me. And by the way, can we can we have an honest discussion? Are you guys just going to be all day? Or can we have an honest discussion about that mugshot? This is where things get off the rails. Now he's going to compliment himself for how hot he is in his mugshot. Because that is not a bad mugshot. Is I- this a bit, Adam? This is a bit, right? No, he thought about it. He planned it. He made the choice to smile. He executed it, and he's happy with the way it came out. Wow. I Honestly, I was terrified about having a mugshot. See? Mm-hmm. That's one of the best mugshots you've ever seen. <laughs> if you have a theory about wow. the Fox 9 story, and if there's a guy who either has a firm or knows somebody, you're correct. That That was, I'm not big enough for that story. A guy was involved with that. It's not a bad mugshot. That's actually that looks so like now he's got his mugshot pulled up, and he's going to talk about how hot he is. <laughs> and I watched Melton break this down with all the zooms and, and everything else. Like this is not an attractive photo that I'd be showing off and bragging about. Could be a work picture. Yeah, if Look, it wasn't taken from a jail cell. <laughs> yeah, it depends on what you do for a living, really. <laughs> yeah, good point. Look at me. I got color. I'm all tan and shit. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong I've with I've seen mug shots of people are pasty and pale and look like warmed over death and like they're sad and, and they're... I look better than meth heads who have lost their teeth. Yeah, you do, Aaron. <laughs> you so might have a fine photo of yourself in the sex offender registry. You don't want to <laughs> brag about it. Right. I like how Woe sets the bar. He's like, I've seen some other mug shots. People are depressed. Things aren't going well for them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, when the bar's low enough, everything's a win, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. You're in prison for... A a crime that involves the word porn in it. And you're not even a little concerned? Like, you don't want to call family or people you work. There's nothing going on except naps and snacks and reading. (laughs) All I'd be thinking about is, like, I hate talking to my neighbors. I got to go tell everyone about this. This is a serious thing. (laughs) Yes. This is pretty serious, Adam. This This is crazy. And he's going, ah, it's nothing. Tell it's, me about the Fruit Loops he had for breakfast there. He gets into it. It's he wild. Does. Yes. He talks about the breakfast he had. And the other guy is in there for a DUI. And he gives him his apple juice. It's fucking How, three, how are you going to have to explain to any future employer what this is? How about talking to a lawyer about getting it expunged? How about making sure you don't have to do any time or that the people around you or your kids are safe? Your kids are going to search your name. And the first thing that's going to come up is porn. And you're talking about the extra <laughs> snacks you got. I do wonder, I wonder about the young children. Like Aaron has younger children. I think the oldest is 10 or something like that. Does she know about what's going on? Because her classmates must find this out. Someone's got to find it out. And then it gets out there and everyone's talking about it. So something like this happens. It's got to be the most embarrassing thing in the world for these kids. Right? He doesn't ever show any concern, really. No. He didn't mention calling them. He didn't mention talking to anybody. Seems Where so... is he? Who's looking after them? What about this girl he's been dating? She must be very concerned. He's like leaning into it as if we're all going to buy it and be like, oh, this must be nothing because he's loving all of this. Yeah. Faces are are drawn, whatever. That, as I stand by that mugshot, that's a good mugshot. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that mugshot. Great. And, you know, I wasn't in a, a terrible mood when it was taken because all the people there were so professional and nice and, and and you know, dare I say sweet. Everyone there was really cool. <laughs> okay, man, whatever, whatever it takes to make you feel good about this uh, situation. Famously, skinny white guys accused of sex crimes do really well in prison and cops <laughs> love them. <laughs> so then I have to play some of this. And this comes via TV's Will Heron, via Ethan Ralph. So Ethan Ralph got in the Zoom meeting for his arraignment and was broadcasting this. And so props to Ethan Ralph for, for getting this. 
because this is, you know, we just heard Aaron describe his day and how amazing it was, how awesome everything was. Let's see how he actually looked when this was going on. Um, he does also have a history of not abiding by court orders and no contact orders specifically um, and violates them via an online broadcast. I thought she would bring that have. This is interesting because the prosecution is asking for a $100,000 bond for him. And they're saying, you know, based on his history, there is the harassment restraining order from his first wife that Aaron violated, which is why he was in court a couple weeks ago and got a year probation in lieu of 90 days in jail. And they're saying, yeah, like in the past, when we've told him not to talk shit about people, he does it anyway. So we really have to restrict him from doing And when he's things. not doing his stupid co-host is. Right. <laughs> or, or the chat. He has to read the chat. Oh, shit. I read the chat. What are you going to do? So it's very interesting to me that they know his history and they're explaining this to the judge. He does have an HRO in place um, protecting a different individual. He recently... Look at what a blast he's having. Yeah. <laughs> this is like a vacation for him. What a fun time. It's worth noting for those who are just listening that his face right now is the definition of tension. It is red. His mm-hmm. jaw is clenched. Mm-hmm. His nostrils are tight. His forehead is burrowed. His eyes are down. He is like a, I don't know, he's like a firecracker ready to pop. Yeah. You wouldn't see this. You know, you get the photograph of yourself going down the, the steep hill on the <laughs> oh roller God, coaster. Yeah. This would not be the photo you would get after the roller coaster ride. It's quite the opposite. But when he was describing this, it sounded like an amusement park. Yeah, where's the laissez-faire attitude? Where's <laughs> yeah, the, this right. is, they love me, this is all going to work out? He seems very, very concerned right here. I thought he was at a five-star Marriott when he was describing it, but... Sentence for an HRO violation. That violation circumstances were on um, violations of on the broadcast. Watching Aaron right and now. so I am Another asking for that toe. specific condition regarding not directly or indirectly talking about KCR... All right, so they're trying to say, like, we really have to make sure this guy is not going to just get on a show and talk mad shit again. So his attorney is not happy about this $100,000 bond. 37 years of age and divorced with uh, three school-aged children. He has an associate arts of arts degree from Brown College. Ooh, it's like going up to over Stuttering John's resume. <laughs> Why should we trust this guy? He's got an associate's degree. <laughs> Kids. Um, and is the owner of Steel Toe Media. Oh, boy. He advises me he has no felony record, um, no record of crimes of violence with the... Ex- Wait a second. Did he headbutt his ex-wife, April? No history of violence? Um, no record of crimes of violence with the exception of the single misdemeanor HRO... Uh, that the prosecutor mentioned. So that's a weird way to phrase that. Yeah. There are no... None, except... Except for that one, of yeah. course. But other than that, there's none. None. <laughs> other than the five felonies, I have zero felonies. That's a good way of looking at it. <laughs> yeah, sure. It rounds down. It's true, <laughs> I guess. So the uh, the judge here thinks that they do need to have a substantial bail. She thinks that that is appropriate. As you'll hear here. Uh, abide. Um, he has to remain law abiding. He has to make future court appearances. He has to keep in contact with his attorney. He has to keep the court updated of any change in his address. He is not to leave the state of Minnesota without um, permission of corrections. He is to not have any contact with the alleged victim in this case, KCR. He is to stay 500 feet away from her residence. The court is also going to order that he abide by all active harassment restraining orders and also that he is. I mean, it's the least you could do. Yeah. (laughs) When wouldn't you? Can you abide by active restraining orders? All right. I guess. (laughs) He's kicking the ground. Oh, shucks. 
<laughs> he's actively disassociating right here. And he's doing yes. that real ego thing where somebody is giving him orders and he's nodding his head. Yes. As if like he agrees and also wants to do this. Like, like this is a mm. mutual decision. He, right. he can't process that he's being ordered. So he's just kind of nodding like, yeah, we're going to, we're going to do that. That sounds about right. I was going to do that anyway. That so was the stuff. plan for steel yeah. toe. I'm going to go back yeah. to having fun and read a new story. He's not talking he's about a- drama anymore. Yeah, he's like agreeing where no one needs him to agree. They're ordering you, buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this, this isn't up to you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's not a matter no of taste. <laughs> yeah, that's no yeah. longer. She's not helping you program the toe program. <laughs> yeah. This is happening you. whether you agree or not, yeah, but thanks. This is legally what you need to do. Who are these podcasts?